Welcome to Radar System course. Today we continue on the fundamentals of the navigation aids. So already we have seen a various navigation system, and that navigation system has a different advantages and disadvantages there. So we have started with a navigation system earlier that is about the instrumental landing system that will be useful to land a aircraft on a runway. Then a distance measuring equipment and that distance measuring equipment that will be useful for the measuring the distance from the airport or from the transmitting station to the aeroplane. Or you can say that on a airport, whatever the transmitting station is there from that to the aeroplane, that is a distance measuring equipment. Then uh, we have seen that another uh, navigation aids that is about a VOR. VOR stands for the very high frequency omnidirectional range and again uh, this VOR is useful for find out the what will be the uh, distance means what will be the a uh, range here. Okay so we can find out a range using a VOR. So in a, all the season all the weather conditions all the measurements or all the navigation system that can be used. Then a last we have seen that is about a tactical air navigation TA can and that is used by used by the uh, military applications okay uh, to find out the distance from the ground station or a bearing information location. Oh. Then we have seen a micro landing system so that is again useful for the landing the aircraft uh, on a runway and then next today we talk about that the another navigation system that is called as a LORAN. That LORAN is nothing but what a long range navigation system so we can see here a long range navigation system so that's why we can say that it is about a low run here okay so earlier we have seen that in navigational aids in which uh, transmitting station transmitting station transmit the signal to find out the range as well as the location but here this LORAN navigation system belongs to the hyperbolic navigation system. So, in which that hyperbola is formed between the masters and flav, as well as your receiving station. And then we need to identify that what is the location of it, a ship and all. So, basically, it provides a long range navigation so that's why it is called as a long range navigation system mostly we can say that it is a one type of a hyperbolic navigation system hyperbolic means what a line of points that will be formed by the station that is transmitting station and then at a focus of that hyperbola that master station is present so that's why it is called as a hyperbolic navigation system and it operates on the principle of a transmitting pulse and uh, it has a, a various transmitting station as well as a uh, that uh, out of that various transmitting station one of the transmitting station will be a master and another is to be a slaver and then that will use a that whatever the transmitting stations are there that are a chain of a transmitting station and that transmitting stations are separated by a several hundred of miles and all the chain station whatever the chain of a station is there and out of which one will be the a master stations and others will be the secondary station you can say that master and flow type configurations here 
so when we consider a transmitting station so there should be at least a two secondary station out of which one of the station is to be a, a master one so a loran system or a loran is divided into various categories and that is called as a, a loran a okay so we can say that loran a loran b loran c loran d and a loran f that various abc both have a different operating system or a operating frequency so if you consider that the frequency band of your operation for the low run is about a 1.7 megahertz to the 2 megahertz that is about a frequency band of a operation of a low run but it transmit a pulse and the transmitting pulse is of a 40 microsecond you can say that a 40 microsecond pulse is to be transmitted and a cycle repetition frequency okay okay we can write here so a cycle repetition frequency it has a nothing but right 25 volts and then if you consider that various low run a b c d so every a b c d low run a low run b low run c they are they operate with a different frequency there but if you consider that a low run a we can say that it operates at a 1.750 megahertz to 1.950 megahertz within this particular band of frequency but if you consider a low run a it is a less accurate here but generally a loran provides aircraft and ships to find the position from the long distance because a ship is present at a various places there so then ship is to know their own position so that's why so identify the position or a location so loran is used here so it was invented in 1944 before World War actually started working on this low run system in 1914 and actually it is implemented from the 1944 year. So, if you consider this a low run, so generally this is about a band of operation here, but uh, mostly we can say that a low run is useful to operate for a 24 hours in any weather conditions or we can say that all weather condition there both in a marine as well as a aviation applications there now low run a b c we can say that a is not more accurate there but it will be useful to identify the location okay so where 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 will be the ship is present so if you consider that a reliable operation of a LoRa, so LoRa A is reliable uh, to obtain the distance of a 700 miles that is in a day, but in a night it will be useful for the 1400 miles at a, a night there. So it just transmitted a pulse. Okay, so the operation is about a pulse transmission there. And a pulse repetition frequency for A, B, C, D, and F that will be a different here. So mostly nowadays people are using a Loran C system instead of A, B here. People are using a Loran C system. But if you compare that a Loran A and a Loran B here, so Loran B and Loran A they are just comparing the what is the phase variation in a signal transmission because master transmit the signal and a secondary station receives the signal so what will be the variation in the phase and based on that variation in the phase we can find out a line of a position and according to that 
we can find out the location base. So Loran C is used in the application. So we proceed with a, a Loran C instead of going to discuss on other Loran systems and all. So we talk about here a Loran C system. Now, because we say that there are the various stations or a chains of a station, we say we can say that there will be the station A, station B, station C, and station D. Likewise, various stations are there. So now we can consider that a chain of a station out of that one of the station is to be a master one, the other to be a secondary station or we can say that a slave station so mostly we could not use the word okay so what about the other station belongs to because that other station is useful for getting the signal from the master there and then they will convert that particular signal to find out the a location as well as a, a position there and then a difference in between that A and B. Okay, so we can say that that what will be the a difference okay in between the particular station that can be identified using the a transmitting pulse. Code. So master and secondary transmit a pulses at a various period of a time, and then whatever the Loran receivers. Okay, project Loran receiver means we can say that at a ship and at a receiver station. So that will receive the signal from the masters and the slaves there. Okay, because transmitting the pulse by the master, there are the total eight pulse will be transmitted. And after that, a secondary station transmit the signal there. So a Loran receiver, what observe? It observe the time difference in the reception between these particular pulses. Suppose I am saying that this one is about a master station and B is a secondary station. And then as here is a receiver here present, or you can say that a lower on receiver. So it will receive the pulses from the A and B. And what will be the differences in this particular? The uh, pulses transmitted by the transmitter there. So, according to that, a time difference in the reception of the pulses at the receiver. And then, that whatever the difference is there, and that difference is to be displayed on the display devices. Or we can say that from this, we can find out a latitude or a longitude of the a ship here supposed to be this one is a receiver is a ship now now these are the transmitting stations okay so you can say that we can consider that these are the transmitting station okay and uh, we here we are receiving the signal so from a and from b the signal is received by this one okay so then that receiver will find out their location or a positions there now a transmit the signal as well as the B transmit the signal. So locations of A and B will be different if you consider the total earth coverage. So according to that A, B, C, D at a different continent or a different places or a, and it's supposed to be somewhere in a uh, American Sea or Asian Sea. Likewise, so different places the transmitters are there and that signals are transmitted by those transmitters and it will be received by the a receiver there so we can consider the difference in a, a signal arrival time okay because a transmitter signal b transmitter signal so signal arrival time difference between the a and b and that will be gives you the difference in the distance between the stations there Okay, so we can find out 
at this particular place what will be the a difference there so we need to find out what will be the locus of point having the same difference from the master and a secondary pair and that will forms a hyperbolic line or we can say that hyperbolic line of a, a position and this particular intersections of this particular two or more of this hyperbolic line of a position that will produce the position of the your receiver or here supposed to be your ship or vessels present here now we can say that uh, there are the various okay users okay so so all the users means they are connected to this particular transmitting station they are getting the signal from this transmitting station and then from this a and b so someone is to be a master and another is to be slave okay a secondary we can consider and then we are getting the signal from master and secondary and according to that we can find out the position of the vessel there and then that difference is to be displayed on the display devices so what are the various components of a loran system so we can consider that a a loran line of a point so how it is going to be display the each and every station so for example we can consider that these are the a stations here okay so at this particular place these are the stations so how a line of point position will be formed so we can say that this one is about a station so we can find out these are the nothing but a hyperbolic line of point by this particular a station so we can say that supposed to be this one is the station here okay and supposed to be here is another station so for example i am saying that this one is the station s1 so these are about the hyperbolic line of positions by this particular station so similarly we have Okay, another station supposed to be considered so these are nothing but the hyperbolic lines of the hyperbolic line of positions for this particular given station and then from this lines of a difference we can find out what will be the a positions there okay so there will we say that there will be the minimum two station one is a master and another is to be secondary there if we have a multiple stations present so for example we can consider that there will be the more number of stations okay so in that case so there will be the chain of a station okay so this one we can say that a master one a master two master three okay so likewise we have a chain of a station okay so and that chain of a station is useful for identifying a location okay so that is useful for the identifying the what will be the a position of a, a station so so it has the transmitting station okay so these are about we can say that master and secondary one we can say and then the loran receiver so we can say that it is present at a vessel or we can say that at a ship or a aircraft there and that will provide you the or the uh, receiver station will receive the signal and that will be useful for, for identifying the location of the a ship there so transmitting here we can say that a transmitter whatever the transmitter present in a lower and that is about you can say it is about a master one and it has a minimum a two station so if we consider a total loran system one master station and for the master station it transmits the signal and as well as we we can say that it has a two secondary station okay so we can consider that a two secondary stations s1 and s2 so we can say that a master one and a secondary station secondary one and a secondary s2 so transmitter station we can consider out of that one of the station will be a transmitting station one of the station is to be a control station one of the station is to be a monitor site 
and another is called the a time and a reference point. So we can consider each and every station their role and transmitter transmit the signal and that means we can say that it transmit a pulses. So we can say here it has a pulses is to be transmitted but every pulses they have a particular interval okay so pulse interval there and that pulse, pulse interval time is specific for the given particular transmitting station and that information is used as a reference at a receiver there then a control station and a we can consider supposed to be another secondary station uh, is to be used as a, a control station okay so in that case a control station and their associated station that measuring the characteristics of whatever the signal transmitted by the a transmitter or a lonar and then they will detect whatever the signal transmitted by the transmitter and if supposed to be any variation in the signal is present so then that particular information is to be given to the a transmitter so trans sometimes if you consider that there are the chain of a transmitter and receiver so one of the station is to be considered as a transmitter and another station is to be considered as a receiver it's not necessary only one station is to be act as a ma master there are multiple station any one station can be act as a master for the given particular chain and another is to be a a secondary one and what happened at the receiver receiver receive the signal okay at any time from this whatever the loran chain and then then from this receiving signal whatever the timing information is getting from the masters and secondary and that will be useful for the identifying the location there so means receiver searches a signal getting the signal and then from this whatever the variations in the signal there uh, from that we can find out the it changes or we can find out the location suppose we say that there will be the changes in the phase okay so we can say that very whatever the a phase changes occur or a pulse is detected by the receiver and then from this detecting pulse so what will be the correct cycle of that particular pulse and that will be tracking that particular pulse and then tracking that particular pulse and then lock the phase of that particular pulse and then through that a synchronization between the transmitting station is to be taken place at a, a receiver side and then it will find out a latitude and a longitude based on the time difference of the a signal there so generally a loran signal it consists of a series of a pulses we can say that a series of a 100 kilohertz of a pulses and that will be sent by the master station we can say that we have a master station there and it will send the pulses and then after that initially pulses sent by the master then another then the master will send a series of nine pulses okay so you can say that we have a series of nine nine pulses transmitted by the master there okay and after that when that pulses are transmitted so after that particular period of a time then a secondary will transmit the pulses okay. and this particular pulses whatever the series of nine pulses are there they are a thousand microsecond apart okay and after that so then uh, there will be trans secondary will transmit the pulse so means total eight eight pulses they are a thousand microsecond apart and then after that a nine pulse will have a, a difference of a time difference of a 200 2000 microsecond here 
means nine pulse is about a 2000 microsecond apart from this eight pulse okay so means after eight pulse transmitted so nine pulse will be of a 2000 microsecond apart then. and then these are the pulses transmitted so that's why whatever the pulses transmission we say in the low run so it requires a lower output power required and then after the given particular time delay is there then a secondary iteration transmit a series of pulses same they are a thousand microsecond apart and then master and secondary station in a chain transmit a signal okay within a particular period of a time okay and they are just transmitting the station okay signal there so generally we need to define what will be the timing for the master is to be transmitting the signal and what will be the timing for the a second is so first master transmit the signal it reaches to the secondary then secondary station waits for a given particular interval and that interval is called as a secondary coding delay means once a nine pulse are transmitted so after that a secondary will transmit uh, okay so that's what we can say that a total elapsed time from the master transmission iteration until the secondary emission is started so we can say that we can say that that will be the delay means we say that a master transmitted signal after that a secondary is starting or initializing and then it will transmitting the a signal there so the time required for the master to the secondary uh, that time is called as a what a baseline travel time so we can say that base line travel time okay so that is about a baseline travel time that is about a btt okay and that particular duration is called as a, a base length here means once a transmitter transmit then a secondary after the first secondary transmit so another secondary transmit in order means every transmitter every iteration they have some coding delay we can say that first master transmit then secondary transmit that is about a delay then a secondary transmit first secondary transmit and then uh, another secondary second secondary bait and then it will transmit so means each and every transmitter and receiver okay so most masters and a secondary there they have some specific time interval there and they, after that they are transmitting the a signal there so these are about the repetition time repetition so first we can say that we have a master then master one we say then a secondary one a secondary two means first it transmit by the master after that a secondary once it is finished after that secondary and then again it will repeat it to the master means this one is about a repetition one okay cycle is repeated here and that cycle whatever the time required to complete this particular trans cycle of a transmission and that is called as a a group repetition interval okay so that is called you can say that a group repetition interval for transmitting this one by one here and that a group inter repetition interval for this particular chain generally it is considered as a a 99 we can consider that a 99600 microsecond okay that is about a group repetition interval so what will be the total group repetition intervals so how many masters and how many stations we consider so for a given particular low run system so how many masters and a secondary be involved so according to that a group repetition interval will be a changes here so we need to understand the concept of what what will be the a baseline travel time or a baseline length or what will be the baseline extension so if you consider the geographical line connecting a master to a particular secondary station so that is nothing but a a baseline okay so you can consider here 
So right now we consider that is about a. Here we can consider this one is about a master station. Okay, and uh, this one is about a secondary station. X is about a secondary station. So from this, okay, we can consider a station that is about a difference in between the master and a secondary. Yeah. And then a in between that master and secondary, this one is about a center line. So we can consider that a center line here. And then from this master, so it create generate a hyperbolic line of points and it has a master station at a local here. Okay, we can see that a focus point generally. Okay, so that is about a hyperbolic. Now this one is about a range is given by this a master. Similarly, we need to find out for this a secondary one. Okay, so likewise, these are about a line of points. We can say that a, a line of points. Now this one from the master to the x, okay, that is about a secondary station that is called as a, a baseline. Okay, so this one we can say from this to this, it is called as a base line. And then from this, okay, so toward this one. So this one is about called as a baseline extension. Okay, this one is called as a baseline extent okay now similarly here we can say that this is about a, a baseline extension now if you consider that there is a observer okay so we can find out a this one is about a location of a receiver there is the observer point and from this particular observer we need to find out a distance Distance from what? Distance from the master as well as the distance from the secondary. So we need to calculate here the distance from the master and a distance from the secondary. And according to that, that particular distance is useful for finding out the location of this particular observer. Then, so means master transmit the signal. Okay, so then that is about a nine pulses. After that, a secondary transmit. Means secondary receive the information from the master and then then that then a secondary transmit. So whatever the observer point here <coughs> means when master transmit the signal, that signal will be received by this secondary as well as it will be received by the same vessel here. Okay, at a observer point. Then a secondary transmit. So secondary when secondary transmit, so this one again is okay. Means we can say that at initial condition, nine pulses are transmitted okay by this master. So it will be observed by this secondary as well as this one. Then secondary transmit. So then this one is observed by this observer. So we need to find out if what will be the distance in between the master and the observer point so we can consider that a distance based on the what will be the time differences between this two or more received signal and that dif time differences will develop a line of a points okay that is hyperbolic line of point and that hyperbolic line of point that will be useful to find out the a position of a ship Okay, so this one is the observer. So what will be the time differences here that we are getting at a received signal? And that will be useful for to find out the position of the ship there. So this one is to be highly accurate one. So that's why a low run, a low run, b low run, c are there. So out of that low run c is highly accurate here. And here the operation is based on the hyperbolic system. First, the locus of point defining a constant difference in the distance between a vessel or you can say that observer point and these two separate stations. 
and then we need to find out a difference there. So to, for that purpose, we need to find out a, what will be the mathematical function that will define the space. Okay, and according to that, we can find out the a position or a location. There. So we can find out the distance. So generally we can say that a distance is equal to what a velocity into time. Okay. So we can find out a distance that will be based on the velocity at all. So generally a velocity is constant, but the distance between a observer point and a transmitting station, or you can say that a vessel, okay, that will be different here. So that's why a time delay detected at this particular vessel or observer point. Okay, because master transmitting the signal as well as a secondary transmit the signal. So there will be the time difference between the pulses of a trans this two transmitting station. And then that particular distance is to be obtained. So distance at this particular observer point, if you wanted to calculate. So we find out a difference in between this particular distance, this one, okay, and a this one distance. So we can say that a distance in between what, whatever the observer point and a master station, we need to calculate, and distance in between what observer point and a secondary station, and that will give you the distance into a master and a observer. So that is about the difference between this between these two stations that we are getting. Okay. And then from this we can find out the position of the observer. Where is the a position of the observer? Okay, so that is about a low run system. So they, they are useful to find out the position there. So if we consider that so system is going to be used so these are just we have considered only the two stations so there may be the multiple stations and then we can find out a difference as well as the a distance between these two stations there so how this chain is there so if you consider in terms of a individual pulses is to be transmitted by the a loran transmitter so loran chain or a group of interval so means we can say that the master transmit okay some particular pulses so we can say that we have a signal is to be transmitted so these are about the pulses transmitted by the master one two three four five six seven eight here okay and then we have the difference of a nine okay so likewise so these are about the station or a signal to be transmitted by the a master thing. and after some specific delay then a secondary transmit so 1 2 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay so there are about the 8 pulses by the secondary station and then a small some particular delay and after that another station 1 2 1 2 3 4 5. okay so like this so we have a, a secondary position so similarly so how many stations we are using suppose uh, we are consider that s1 and s2 second station two and this particular timing is called as a group interval okay so this one we can consider earlier that whatever the delay by each and every station okay so that is called as a group repetition interval and initially we say that it transmits and then there will be the delay so that's called as a, a delay okay secondary coding delay means uh, transmit the transmitting pulse and after that this one is about a, a time delay between the a transmitting stations and all then this will be the another delay so 3d1 okay so like so that is about a total time delay so overall what will be the total pulses or a what will be the signal is to be transmitted so this one is nothing but a a time delay observed by this observer there. So from this, we can consider that as the observer point, we need to find out what will be the location based on the 
a phase difference of the signal and then we that is to be useful to identify the a location state okay so there are the chain of a transmitting and a receiving station to be considered and then they have formed their line of positions for each and every station okay so we consider here a station of to be a transmitted a signal okay. next these are about a long range navigation system a low run and uh, that low run because it transmitted a pulses and because it received the pulses from the various transmitting station and a secondary station so the interference is very very low here in between this particular pulses and differences in times in the reception of a synchronized signal they form a hyperbolic low run lines of a, a position there okay so that's all about a low run navigation system so then uh, we go to the another navigation system that is called as a omega here so we use a term that is recalled as a omega so we have a another navigation system and that will be called as omega generally this omega is a very low frequency operated navigation system okay you can see that very low frequency very low frequency operated navigation system and that low operating frequency means what it is op it operating operating frequency is about a 10 kilohertz and a 14 kilohertz okay so these are about the range okay so or you can say that a 14 kilohertz so there are the different different stations so there are different stations operate with a different particular frequencies so we will see that stations are present there okay so mostly we can say that we have a very low frequency signal and or we can say that that is about a band of a operating frequency and that will be between that 10 to 14 kilohertz okay so that is about a band of a frequency and then this uh, very low frequency navigation system omega that will be useful for useful in all weather condition and it provides a a medium accuracy navigation system to the marine navigator and the system is consist of eight widely spaced transmitters so means we can say that it has a total transmitters they are eight now and that they their locations if you consider they have the different operating frequencies and the omega stations and their frequencies we will see right now so we can consider that a different stations now and their operating frequency so in a world map if you see that stations are present and the name of the station is called as north norway their operating frequency is about 1.8 1 kilohertz then we have a b liberia that is a 12.0 kilohertz and then c we have a hawaii its frequency is about 11.8 kilohertz then d that is of a north dakota their frequency is about 13.1 kilohertz then e la reunion that is a 12.3 kilohertz then f argentina that is a 12. Nine kilohertz. Then a G. Australia. 
that will be all. 13.0 kilohertz and then H, Japan. And frequency is about 12.8 kilohertz. Now these are the stations and these are the stations widely spaced there and they are located at a different different positions and their operating frequency is a, a different but here there is no master station there is no secondary station so the relationship between this all the stations they called as a omega station so there is no masters and a, a secondary station already we have seen that in a low run there is a master and a secondary station but here there is no master and a, a secondary station there so navigator or we can say that any navigator or anyone can be used this particular signal frequency navigator is free to use any station pair and that will provide a line of position accurate line of position and that mostly it is using using the time differences there to find out the positions so with this we stop here